Hi, welcome back to Embodied Collective with Jessica. This is Jessica, and I'm so glad that you're here. So today we're going to be talking about meditation. So what are the goals of meditation? What does a meditation practice actually look like? And how does it actually benefit us? So what are the goals of meditation? And what does it actually look like to meditate? Typically, when we think of meditation, or at least when I used to think of meditation, I pictured um, someone sitting on the top of a mountain um, and it being extremely peaceful and quiet with no distractions, and the goal was to clear the mind of all thoughts. Well, that seems pretty lofty and pretty unattainable. In reality, um, our meditation practice can happen anywhere. Um, it can happen in our homes, in our cars, at work. All we need um, are a few moments of silence. And the goal of meditation is not necessarily to clear the mind of all thoughts. The goal of meditation is to gain some distance between our thoughts, feelings, and emotions and ourselves. And what I mean by that is um, typically all day we are bombarded with thoughts and feelings and emotions and judgments to those thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And when we meditate, of course, when we're sitting in nothing but silence, when we're sitting with nothing but our feelings and our body and our mind, it's inevitable that all of these thoughts, feelings, and emotions and judgments come up, they kind of flood us. That can be definitely an intimidating aspect of meditation and maybe one reason why someone would not pursue meditation as a practice or perhaps they practiced meditation a few times and just became super frustrated uh, because of those thoughts that, that come pouring in. I absolutely understand that. And I want to um, empathize with that and just let you know that you are not alone. That's totally normal. We are human beings living in this world and that is what will happen when we start a meditation practice. And the goal of meditation is not to eliminate that, although it may seem that way. The goal of meditation is to become an observer as those thoughts, feelings, and emotions come up. So as we're sitting in silence and we're listening to our breathing and we're feeling grounded and all of a sudden a to-do list starts to form or a judgment of, am I doing this right? I'm cold, I'm a little warm. Um, as those starts to come in, which are totally normal, our brain will then send those judgments of pay attention. You're not doing this right. Get back into it. You always start things and then fail. And then the loop starts playing of judgments. Again, totally normal. So as those inevitable thoughts and judgments come into our mind, through our meditation practice, what will become stronger is our ability to get some distance from those judgments. So when we have a feeling of, it's too cold, it's too warm, am I doing this right? We gain the ability to view those thoughts, feelings, and emotions from a different perspective, almost looking down on them from a sense of curiosity instead of from a place of judgment. We view them, we gain distance and perspective, and then we allow them to continue on. So we don't get stuck in that moment of, yes, you are doing this wrong. You always do things wrong. Why do you do this to yourself? Do you remember that one time and then it just goes and goes and goes? Instead, we observe it and we allow it to pass. And then we return to the breath. We return to the present moment. And then when the next feeling and thought comes in, instead of following that string, we again observe it, 
and let it pass. So we actually invite these thoughts, we invite these feelings to come in because they're a part of being a human being. They're part of you, they're part of me. And meditation is not about disconnecting from ourselves. It's about um, seeing ourselves. It's about seeing all of us. It's so easy to find distractions. Um, like I talked about in my last video, you know, it's really easy to find those procrastination methods, those, those ways that we easily distract. Those are all escapes from coming closer to who we truly are. So when we talk about meditation, I also want to acknowledge the fact that meditation can be scary. Um, the concept of sitting with nothing but our thoughts and our feelings and our body. Um, when I started meditation, that concept was frankly terrifying. I had spent so much time and energy, so many years running and trying to escape and distract from um, my past, from pain and anger and hurt and fear, that the thought of sitting with all of that really terrified me and really made me want to have nothing to do with meditation. Um, so my first introduction to meditation was through yoga, just brief uh, periods of, of meditation. And those brief periods were really enough for me to not necessarily want to pursue it because of the thoughts and feelings and fears that arose just in those brief periods. However, I started growing and I, it became very apparent that the only way that I was truly going to heal was to sit with all of that and allow myself to feel it all. Um, we cannot grow and evolve if we just ignore or continue to distract. It's really about taking ownership of our past and coming face to face with all of that yucky stuff that we really don't want to come face to face to. Um, and then we really become this new, evolved, strong, whole person. And that's what I hope that um, you will take with you on your own meditation journey. The benefits of meditation are numerous, probably too many for me to even list, but I can share the benefits of meditation, uh, my own meditation practice in my own life. So I talked about being able to um, work through some past pain and fear. That was huge for me. That in and of itself made me want to continue my meditation practice because I never wanted to be stuck in a state of resentment or anger again for extended periods of time. When we hold trauma, pain, and resentment in our body, it literally stores itself in various parts of our body. And when we don't process it, it comes out in aches and pains. If we still don't process it, it comes as digestive issues, um, migraines, then we get um, chronic illnesses, chronic pain that can manifest into lifelong and fatal illnesses and diseases. Um, so there's lots of research on trauma and how it's held physically in our bodies. And one way, one free uh, way that we can all fight that is by establishing a regular meditation practice. So in addition to you know, massively preventing um, trauma and pain and resentment from building in the body and resulting in chronic illnesses. Um, other benefits of meditation, um, as I'm sure that you could understand, so decreased blood pressure, decreased stress and anxiety, um, fights depression, and simply allows us to view the world from a different place, from a place of curiosity versus a place of fear um, and deep pain. 
So meditation just changes our brain, literally, um, to view things completely differently. So we have more healthy relationships, we're able to set better boundaries. And all of this boils down to meditation allowing us to have a deeper relationship with ourselves. Because when we're sitting with nothing but ourselves, we really get to know ourselves on a really intimate level. We don't have this outside noise. Um, you know, we don't have the radio, the TV, a podcast, another person. Um, we don't have that influence allowing us to change maybe who we really are. Meditation brings us face to face with who we truly are, what we're on this earth to do, and empowers us to follow that and uh, live this life that we are meant to live. There are lots of different types of meditation and that can also be a little overwhelming at first. So there's kundalini meditation, there are guided meditations as well as silent meditations. You can do meditations for the chakras, you could do you know, body meditations. Um, there are all different types of meditations. So um, it's great that there are apps that can um, assist you in starting your meditation practice or continuing your meditation practice. So there's, uh, there are lots of free apps like Insight Timer, uh, there's also Headspace, which is probably my favorite. I believe it's free at first and then you have to pay after that. I will link um, my suggestions below in the comments box so you can see that as well. Um, there are also YouTube videos. So there are lots of free resources available to begin your, your um, meditation practice if you are unsure and kind of feeling overwhelmed. So where to begin when we're starting our meditation practice? So I would suggest starting with five minutes a day and um, starting in the morning. You don't need to be practicing your meditation in the morning. You can really practice at any time of the day and feel free to do so as you may need it throughout the day. You definitely don't need to only practice once a day if you feel called to really get into the breath and you're feeling really anxious, take two minutes, five minutes, lock yourself in the bathroom and meditate. Take what you need. But just to start, um, let's start with five minutes a day in the morning. I really like practicing my meditation in the morning because I feel like it's just a great way to start my day with a clear head. I'm not starting anxious. I'm not starting starting my day worried about what may or may not happen. Um, I'm starting my day centered and connected to myself and my truth. So I also really notice um, the benefits of my morning meditation practice when I don't meditate. So I really notice the difference um, when I do not meditate. I just feel off center all day and I just feel more on edge and more anxious. So take five minutes um, in your morning and um, start your meditation practice. To actually begin your practice, what does that actually look like? So as I mentioned, um, you know, potentially uh, locking yourself in the bathroom if that's the only space that you have to yourself for five minutes or three minutes, um, just take that. Um, if you do have the time and the space and the availability to set up your meditation practice, if you have um, a quiet space that you want to kind of make your meditation corner or even uh, an extra room that you want to make your meditation room, that's fantastic. Um, I understand that that's not a reality for most of us. So finding just a spot on the floor, uh, make it comfortable. This doesn't need to be uncomfortable. So sitting on a blanket or some pillows, um, even putting pillows under your knees if you'd like that support. Um, or sitting in a chair. If you're sitting, um, feel free to put your feet on the earth, meaning don't cross your legs, things of that nature. So the purpose of that is we wanna be grounded to the earth. So whether that's being grounded by sitting on the floor or being grounded um, by sitting in a chair and having our feet physically on the earth beneath. So when we're first starting out, it can be beneficial 
to count our breaths. So once we're seated, we can place our hands maybe in our lap or on our knees. Palms up signifies that we are open to receive. So if you're feeling called to do that, um, have the palms up on the knees or the lap. And we just wanna feel grounded, taking a moment to pay attention to the earth beneath us. We have an upright spine, uh, feeling perhaps pulled slightly by the crown of the head, tucking the chin slightly, protecting the back of the neck, and closing the eyes. And from here, just taking a few moments to settle in, feeling grounded by the earth beneath you and that slight pull by the crown of the head. Bringing the attention to your breath in the body. Just noticing it. And perhaps counting the breaths. So inhale one, exhale two, and so on. Counting up to the number 10. When you get to 10, starting over at one. As those thoughts, feelings, judgments come in as they inevitably will, simply observing them and allowing them to pass through. So continuing this for the next two, three, five minutes. And at the end of your meditation, just fluttering the eyes back open, bringing your awareness back to the space and moving on with your day, hopefully from a place of centeredness, hopefully feeling more connected to yourself and everything around you. So I hope that you found this helpful and perhaps you will explore your own personal meditation practice. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will talk to you soon. This is Jessica from Embodied Collective with Jessica.